In an icy wasteland, a carriage brings an orc criminal to a giant fortified prison. Then he meets his cellmates, the Bard Edgen and the Barbarian Holga. Edgen's friendly and warns him to behave, but the orc still attempts to make a pass at Holga, who responds by breaking his knees and smashing his face. The following day, Edgen and Holga are brought before the Absolution Council for an appeal for their pardon. Edgen begins by telling his backstory to give context for why they're there. Years ago, Edgen was a member of the Harper's faction, a group of spies that fought against evil pro bono. By day he'd eavesdrop on mercenaries, stop bandits in their tracks, and bring Fae and Red Wizards to justice. By night he'd come home to his wife Zia and their daughter Kira. Zia didn't mind the fact they were poor because she thought Edgen was making the world a better place. One night, Edgen came home to find Red Wizards riding away. When he rushed inside, he discovered Zia was dying, and with her last strength she told him she hid Kira in the wall. That day, Edgen's devotion to the oath died as well. It was hard for Edgen to raise Kira alone and he kept going to the tavern to get drunk until one day he met Holga, who was banished from her tribe for falling in love with an outsider. Holga took pity on the baby and accepted to help Edgen raise her, but they never became a couple, they had a relationship based on mutual respect. They tried to live honestly, but surviving was getting hard, so Edgen and Holga resorted to thievery. They started by robbing jewelry shops, and when they put their hands on a necklace that let you become invisible, they gifted it to a now older Kira so she could stay safe. Kira started to come to the robberies with them, and eventually they recruited new team members like Sorcerer Simon and Rogue Forge. This allowed them to hit bigger treasures, but they still had rules, they never harmed anyone, and they only stole from the rich. Things changed when they met a wizard named Sophina, who requested their help to rob Karin's Keep, a harper stronghold filled with riches. While Edgen refused at first, Forge convinced him when he told Edgen that the keep contained the Tablet of Reawakening, which he could use to bring Zia back to life. Since this place was more dangerous than usual, Edgen told Kira to stay home, ignoring her pleas for him not to go if the threat was that big. He didn't tell her about the tablet just in case the plan wasn't successful. The team easily broke into Karin's keep and Sophina immediately grabbed a weird glowing horn. Edgen grabbed the tablet, but this triggered a trap that made all the guards appear. Sophina breaks the rules and knocks down all the guards before using a spell to stop time, which traps both Holga and Edgen. Before the others run away, Edgen throws the tablet at Forge and asks him to keep Kira safe. As Edgen finishes the story, the last council member finally shows up, who turns out to be a bird-like creature. Edgen and Holga don't hesitate and jump on him to break through the window, using the creature's wings to escape safely, ignoring the fact the council was ready to approve their pardon. Now free, the duo returns to their home, finding it's been empty for a while. After retrieving Edgen's loot, they go to the tavern to discuss how to find Kira, and thanks to a flyer they learn that Forge is now Lord of Neverwinter. After a long riding trip, they make it to Neverwinter, which is preparing for the annual Hyson Games. At the Lord's Castle, they reunite with Kira, who is more excited to see Holga than her own father because she thinks Edgen abandoned her for selfish reasons. Then they reunite with Forge, who explains he used the riches stolen from Karin's keep to make himself the Lord of Neverwinter and Sophina's working with him as his advisor. Edgen then learns that Forge has been telling Kira that he was arrested for stealing riches and not because of the Tablet of Reawakening, and to make matters worse, there are wanted posters for their heads, proving they weren't just released legally. Hurt over being lied to, Kira runs out of the room, and Forge announces he won't give them Kira or the Tablet. Edgen and Holga attempt to attack Forge, but Sophina uses her magic to trap them on the floor, revealing that she and Forge had been working together to betray the rest of the team back during their last heist. Forge orders his guards to imprison the duo, but Sophina changes the orders to execution behind his back. The duo is taken to an alley for their deaths, but Holga lifts a tile from the floor and uses it to fight off the guards. Her barbarian skills make it an easy battle for her, and soon all the men are unconscious. Then she steals an axe from them before escaping with Edgen. Meanwhile Forge tells Kira that Holga and Edgen abandoned her again after getting the tablet. Moments later, Holga and Edgen agree they must rescue Kira and the tablet from Forge, and for that they'll need a team. First they go looking for Simon, who is performing silly magic tricks for entertainment, but these tricks are actually a diversion while he casts a spell to steal the audience's gold and trinkets. When Simon sees his old friends, the shock makes him fail the spell and the audience catches on the trap. Furious, they try to attack Simon, who tries to defend himself with magic. He isn't a very good sorcerer though and his spells go wrong, first he sends the people up to the ceiling, then he ends up flying through the window himself. Luckily Holga is ready outside to catch him. The trio runs away and Simon accepts to help, but he points out that his magic isn't enough to stop Sophina. To get inside they'll need a druid, and Simon knows one. Later, the trio arrives to see a druid about to get killed. Suddenly a horse goes crazy and transforms into an owl bear, revealing she's Simon's friend. The creature quickly beats up all the soldiers and saves the other girl before taking her normal form named Doric and escaping on an actual horse. The trio later meets Doric at her home in the elven woods and learns Doric doesn't trust humans because her own family abandoned her for being a tiefling. However she hates Forge more because he's been destroying the forest and killing her people, so she agrees to help. 
Meanwhile in her private quarters, Sophina reveals she's an evil red wizard and speaks to her master, the Lich Shastam. He entrusts her with their ultimate plan, for which Sophina has been manipulating Forge to bring back the games. Afterward, Sophina joins Forge as he meets with other lords to discuss plans for the Hyson games. The castle has a vault where they'll be keeping all the riches from the bets and the doors protected by an ancient seal that nobody can break through. Suddenly Sophina detects a presence and points at a bug, who turns out to be Doric using her shape-shifting abilities to spy. The guards immediately go after her, but Doric changes into multiple animals to escape, first a mouse that sneaks through the corridors, then a bird that flies out of the castle. While dodging arrows, she crashes into a flag and falls, but she lands as a cat and becomes a deer to run faster and successfully escape from Sophina's attacks. Later Doric tells the group about Sophina being evil and the seal on the vault. Simon can't break such a seal unless he were to possess the Helmet of Disjunction, which is said to have gone missing ages ago. However Holga says her people fought the Cult of the Dragon, so they may know where it went. Meanwhile Sophina hires an assassin to hunt down the team, she also orders him to kill all the guards that let Doric escape. Sometime later, the group stops at Holga's old home so that she may collect some stuff, including her walking stick. Holga is heartbroken to see her ex-husband has moved on to another barbarian woman, but he's still friendly toward her and wishes her happiness. In the evening, the team arrives at a graveyard full of bodies that fought in the Evermores long ago. With Simon's magic, the bodies are only able to stay alive for up to five questions. The team begins digging, and each body tells them a piece of a story about the battle they died in, always saying someone else took the helmet. After going through multiple bodies, they finally learn that the helmet was passed on to Zenk from Tai, where the Red Wizards come from. Ejin doesn't trust Thayan since they killed Zia, but the others have heard of Zenk's stories as a paladin and convince Ejin to ask for his help. A few days later, the team finds Zenk in the middle of more heroics, he uses his kindness to calm down a sea creature and rescue the baby that it had swallowed. They have a meeting with him and tell him about Sophina, so Zenk explains the entire history of the Red Wizards. Shas Tam had used the horn they stole to stage an unholy coup and unleashed a spell that consumed the souls of all who beheld it, enslaving them to its will. With this army of the undead, Shas Tam conquered Tai, but for now his powers can't cross the borders, so Zenk suspects Sophina is trying to help him expand his territory. Zenk only agrees to give the team the helmet when Ejin swears to distribute Forge's wealth among the people of Neverwinter. Next the team travels to the bowels of the Underdark, where the helmet is hidden. While crossing the woods, Zenk talks about how he witnessed the unholy power of Shas Tam and how it corrupted good people to be slaves to evil, which is why he moved away from the way of the Red Wizards and used his skills for good. Zenk just managed to escape the Red Wizard spell, which is why he bears a mark on his forehead. Meanwhile Sophina's assassin continues to follow them in secret. The team goes down a hole in the forest to reach the Underdark City. There are a bunch of Rockmans around, but the team gets ignored because these monsters only eat smart people. Next they must cross a chasm through a dwarvish bridge filled with traps. Zenk knows how to avoid them, but a distracted Simon accidentally triggers a mechanism that causes the bridge to collapse. Holga looks in her bag for some rope and Simon finally notices her walking stick that she stole from a wizard years ago. It turns out that it's actually a hither-thither staff, which opens portals across 500 yards. The team safely crosses the chasm and reaches a statue that Zenk activates to free the helmet. At that moment, they're ambushed by Sophina's assassins. Zenk uses his amazing skills to quickly knock out the henchmen before going hand to hand with the leader, using his glowing sword against the enemy's flaming one. Zenk defeats him as well, but it's all pointless, since they're undead, the Thaeans just keep coming back. The team tries to run away only to find the way blocked by a very fat dragon, who immediately chases them and devours the Thaeans. The dragon causes destruction all around them and the team must run while dodging falling debris. Simon activates a portal and sends them to a platform, but the dragon tilts it down and sends Ejin toward its mouth. Luckily Zenk cuts in and stabs the dragon in the head. Unfortunately the dragon isn't dead and chases them again until they're trapped in a small cave that is filling with salt water. This gives Ejin an idea, they hide underwater and he makes Holga provoke the dragon until it breathes electricity, then Simon uses a flame to create an explosion that blows up the cave, allowing the team to escape by swimming. After making it to the shore, Zenk bids the others farewell and returns home. Simon attempts to take control of the helmet and finds himself meeting his ancestor, who doubts Simon's capabilities and doesn't allow him to attune with it. Simon keeps trying for hours but continues to get rejected, which brings down the team's morale. Simon and Doric want to leave, so Ejin finally opens up to them. He explains that the Red Wizards had killed his wife because he had stolen from them when he got tired of working pro bono and admits he's failed everyone, but that's also why he can't quit now. Touched by this, the team decides to rejoin him. Afterward, Holga comes up with a plan to use the staff instead of the helmet to get inside the castle. First they buy a framed painting and hide a portal underneath the canvas. Then Ejin hides underneath a pile of leaves on the road and waits for a carriage of Forge's treasures to pass by to stick the painting to it. Simon opens another portal nearby and Holga pushes the wood of the carriage through the painting, allowing Doric to get inside and bring the painting in. The frame almost falls in the process and Simon gets dragged out too, 
but Doric uses her tail for leverage and picks him up. Then they use the portal to re-close the carriage, and Doric puts the canvas back into place before escaping by transforming into a bug. Sometime later, the team makes it to Neverwinter for the start of the Heisen Games, which consists of five groups going through very dangerous challenges. Forge opens the ceremony and urges the crowd not to leave after the games are over because there will be a gift for everyone. The guards store the painting with the other riches, but it falls to the floor, so when the team opens a portal in private they discover they can't use it. Doric begins using a knife to try to carve a hole for a bug to go through while Edgen gives Simon a pep talk, reminding him he works best when he's under pressure and that he should try the helmet again. Simon then creates an illusion of a singing Edgen to distract the castle guards, however Simon's foot gets stuck and the illusion starts to fail, causing the guards to chase them. While Edgen and Simon run inside, Holga stays behind to fight the guards with both her axe and anything she can find in the room, quickly knocking them all out. Simon reaches the sealed door and puts on the helmet, finding his ancestor again, who keeps insulting him. This time Simon gets angry because there's something more urgent than his own pride and punches his ancestor, which finally allows him to attune with the helmet and open the vault. Using his new confidence in himself, he knocks out more guards, then he and Holga enter the vault, only to find it empty. Meanwhile Doric manages to make the hole and sneaks through in the shape of a worm, finding all the riches hidden under the arena. There are a bunch of guards taking them away to a ship, revealing Forge's plan is to escape with all the bet money and he doesn't know about Sofina's real intentions. A guard finds Doric and knocks her out, while Holga and Simon are captured by magical tentacles that come out of the floor. Edgen sneaks around the corridors and finds Kira to apologize to her for being a bad father. However this turns out to be Sofina using an illusion, and she uses the tentacle magic to capture him as well. When Forge comes in, he plans to execute them all, but Edgen convinces him to allow them to compete in the games to die with dignity. Moments later, the team finds themselves in the Colosseum, and Simon and Doric were given bracelets that block their magic. The first event is a maze filled with monsters, and soon the team finds themselves running all over the place. The monsters go after all the teams, using tricks like presenting an illusion to corner a dwarf. Doric finds a sword inside a chest, but when Holga opens another one, it turns out to be a mimic that uses its tongue to catch her leg. Luckily Doric cuts it off just in time. Meanwhile Edgen gets ready to escape in his boat with Kira and leaves Sofina in charge. Back in the maze, Doric trips and gets her hand stuck inside a gelatinous cube. Holga helps her get it out but the bracelet stays inside. Edgen gets cornered by another monster, but the team walks through the illusion and breaks him out. After some more running, they manage to leave the maze, where cages are waiting to take them to the next challenge. Edgen points out they need to escape and not advance, giving Doric an idea. She makes them jump inside the gelatinous cube, and once the first challenge ends, the cube is taken away. Doric transforms into a snake to escape, then pulls everyone out too. They run through a tunnel and find the gear, plus some keys to free Simon from the bracelet. After taking another tunnel, the team makes it to the dock where they knock out all the guards and find the boat with the riches and the tablet. When Forge and Kira show up, they use the tablet to prove their story. Kira finally believes them, causing Forge to hold a knife to her throat to make the others back away. While Forge monologues like a dumb villain, Holga grabs a potato and throws it at his face, causing him to let Kira go. She joins the team as they hop on the boat to get away, with Simon using a spell to cause a wave of water to hit Forge. Kira forgives Edgen as they reconcile. Meanwhile Sofina is using the horn to kick off her plan, she convinced Forge to do the games and make the people stay for a gift so she could use them all to make a new undead army. The team notices a dark cloud forming over the city and agrees to come to save the day. While Sofina begins releasing the spell over the gambling lords, Edgen makes a plan in which Simon opens a portal on the ship and connects it to a giant balloon over the Colosseum. The riches begin falling through the portal, and all the game attendants begin following the balloon to grab some gold, saving them from Sofina's spell. Edgen asks Kira to hide with her necklace, then the team confronts Sofina, who attacks them with a fire spell. Simon protects them with a shield then Doric transforms into an owlbear to jump on Sofina, who pushes her away and uses her magic to activate a dragon statue. The team uses their various abilities to attack it, but nothing can hurt Stone. The dragon is about to eat Edgen when Doric realizes she must attack Sofina, which effectively disables the dragon spell. Then Sofina catches Holga and Edgen in a sphere before summoning a giant hand to go after Doric, but a confident Simon summons his own hand to fight back. Sofina still wins and destroys it while the sphere crashes and cracks. The team won't give up and proceeds to overwhelm Sofina with all kinds of attacks until she activates the time-freezing spell. Sofina begins gloating about her victory, but suddenly everyone moves because this was their plan all along. When Sofina looks to her side, she discovers an invisible Kira put the bracelet on her wrist, blocking her magic. Then Doric becomes an owlbear and gives Sofina a good beating until she kills her. While the team celebrates their victory, they find that Holga was mortally wounded in the fight, and she dies. Kira weeps over her, and Edgen realizes Holga was the closest thing Kira had to a mom growing up, so he decides to use the tablet to revive Holga. While the team joins the celebrations, Forge tries to run away with some gold, 
only to be captured by Zenk. Later on, the original city lord reawakens now that Sofina's magic is gone and awards the heroes medals for saving Neverwinter. Forge is imprisoned and tries to make an appeal for his pardon by telling his own tragic backstory, but the council doesn't care for it. Desperate, Forge finds the bird creature and attempts to fly out too, but the council made sure to move to seal all windows, so Forge just charges into a wall. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.